with them. That bottomless pit of data could allow Big Brother to monitor virtually anything it wants. Even the CIA director says the very idea of secrecy will change forever. If we look at what's going on with the TSA, we, we don't see them just in airports now. They have their Viper teams patrolling around the country, checkpoints uh, that promised to continue in 2012 and escalate in 2013. Congress to fund massive expansion of TSA checkpoints. This was the scene at the Tri-Rail Station in West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach Police led the exercise along with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and officials from the Transportation Safety Administration. Our Tampa Police and federal government's agencies are Teaming up, they unveiled a new plan that could stop a potential terror threat where hundreds of people pass through each day. It's the sort of security we've seen a lot of since 9-11 at places like airports and seaports and major sporting events. Now, here at the bus station, it's all part of what Homeland Security calls Viper in this team effort between TSA, ICE, CBP, and TPD. For those of you who plan on avoiding the TSA by staying away from airports, I'm afraid you're in for a rude awakening because the TSA has actually expanded its Viper program, which is already active in airports, bus terminals, and subway stations, but now it also includes roadside inspections of commercial vehicles on the roads and highways across America. Yeah, Vicki, you know, this was a massive operation, really bringing all federal, state, and local agencies together to not only do random searches, but also create an army of agents on wheels. But now, TSA agents are on the interstates fighting terrorism with visible intermodal prevention and response, or VIPER operations. The VIPER operations, we're told, have been conducted around the country. And not just at transportation hubs, but at major sporting events, in the streets, and on the highways across America. They're recruiting truck drivers like Rudy Gonzalez into the first observer highway security program to say something if they see something. The bottom line is this, if you see something suspicious, say something about it. The TSOs and the BDOs involved in the operation were only supposed to be handing out recruitment brochures since neither position has actual federal law enforcement training. So if they were supposed to be handing out brochures, what were they doing inspecting the truck? During this exercise, the officers did not conduct any screening of any vehicles. Then why did uh, they ask to open the top? of this truck. Uh, there again, I want to go back to this question. What kind of specific training do they have to be on the nation's highways conducting these kind of searches? TSOs and BDOs do not receive specific training with regard to screening vehicles in the highway mode of transportation. So even though our TSOs have no federal law enforcement training, you are um, pleased that they are participating in these type exercises. Again, the Viper program is set up to provide a visual deterrent. So these TSOs who have been administratively reclassified from being screeners and processors and given no federal law enforcement training are going to be out on our nation's highways and our seaports and participating in this type of activity. And now it looks like domestic drone use is going to come to an airspace near you. Drones, they're not just for Yemen anymore. Look at the, the fact that we're now flying drones mm -hmm. for dom domestic law enforcement around the country. Of course we're going to see this spread uh, to the general public. We will be uh, under the eye of Big Brother. Unmanned drones that can tase or shoot a person from the sky and can even launch a grenade. Is this the next phase of the police state where cops can play video games with our civil liberties and with our lives? Check out these cyborg insect drones. They're called nano quadrotors. So these devices can be controlled from far distances and they may look teeny tiny, but they're actually equipped with cameras, microphones. That technology is advanced enough that it could land on you, use its needle, and take a DNA sample, or it could inject a micro tracking device under your skin. It would feel like the prick of a mosquito bite. A 50 gigapixel camera. It's called Aware 2 camera system. Kind of looks like another insect with hairs, but those are actually wires and ports, parts of multiple cameras to take multiple pictures from multiple angles. I think there's 98 of them. And now they're gonna have these drones, and it's not only the big cities. Every small town, every small city is gonna have their drones. And of course, the federal government is, as you mentioned, supplying these things. Uh, they're all federal agents, various federal agencies have them. Undoubtedly, the state police will have them, the local police. 
They uh, also are developing x-rays that can see through the, the walls of your house. Now using x-rays to x-ray you while you drive around. That's right, using the same technology that's in those airport scanners. Feds are now using these mobile x-ray vans and they can see through cars, walls, and clothing. You can uh, conceal a powdered explosive within a vehicle which would not be detected by one of these new x-ray devices. Mm -hmm. So it's not obvious even with these new technologies and, and the enormous sacrifice in privacy uh, that will necessarily be safer. If they're going to conduct a search there has to be probable cause, there has to be judicial approval. What we don't want is the police uh, investigating everybody. We want them investigating the bad guys. And the feds are looking at making everybody wear taser bracelets when they get on airplanes. No, the feds actually heard a proposal on that. They're not joking. They're looking at it and thought it was a very good idea. They can spy on you in your backyard while you're sunbathing. Uh, and as you say, they can taser you, shoot a baton into your head, or uh, even kill you with a grenade. And we're supposed to feel safe about this. We're supposed to think this is to fight terrorism, when, of course, it actually is terrorism. Most of what we're told about terrorism is, I think, uh, a phony baloney. Well, and that sounds like a frightening prospect, but is this simply a price that Americans are now going to have to pay to help their government pretend, protect them from the threat of terror? There is no threat of terror. That's a canard. As an American, I have a 662,000 to one chance of winning an Olympic medal. If I take a bath tonight, I have a 685,000 to one chance of drowning in that bathtub. If I walk outside after this interview, I have a 2.3 million chance of being struck dead by lightning. On an average year on this planet, my chances are 3.2 million to one that I'm gonna be killed by a terrorist. So what we see building out of 9-11, uh, the Patriot Act, and ending recently with National Defense Authorization Act 2012, and every other piece of uh, uh, so-called legislation that's protecting the people, is the enriching of the uh, financial super elite in the security industrial complex. We see a perpetuation of the finocracy where financial interests uh, write legislation that govern this country. All this talk of fearing Ahmadinejad out of uh, every closet or coming out from underneath everybody's bed is nothing more than a fear tactic so we can enrich a very few people on this planet. Look, you, do you want somebody with a bomb walking into a football stadium or an airport? Yeah, this that's is their gonna... reasoning for everything. That's their reasoning for taking all of our civil liberties away. I'm not buying it, okay? They fear monger, they use fear as a way to sell this bullshit. This is thought police. This is out of 1984. You can't think a certain way, because if you think a certain way, they're going to predict that you might do a crime in the future. Started with the federal government, one hand the Patriot Act, and the other hand the president deciding to become judge, jury, and executioner on an American in a foreign country. He doesn't need a trial. We don't have time for a trial. The evidence of guilt is so overwhelming. And it first starts as we're trying to find terrorists. Then it goes to, well, we're trying to find all criminals. Oh, well, do you want a drug gang member going into your neighborhood? Then it goes to, well, look, do you want a druggie going into your neighborhood? Well, that guy took drugs once and well then that guy did this and that guy did that next thing you know it's spreading and it's already spreading we already know that uh, the programs they had for terrorists they're now saying that the drug gangs in mexico are also terrorists of a different kind so it spreads and it spreads until we become 1984 and if you get a little too nervous on any given day going into any given mall well the future attribute program believes that you might do something wrong in the future so they have this big utah facility now it's, it's sweeping up everything so it all it is all about at this point in time their own self-restraint which frankly from what I've heard on the inside ain't being used more importantly there are provisions of the Patriot Act which have been implemented in secret that is to say that you or I as a citizen uh, do not know what necessarily we're doing to break the law because they've made the actual violation secret the DOD has all the guidance requirements capabilities to do what's necessary to protect the government uh, and our infrastructure now they just choose not to do that they're looking for additional verbiage and authorities which they really frankly don't need but they want those authorities over you know over private companies uh, they do. and then they want to say you have to now share all this data with us if there's potential for abuse there will be abuse people don't understand human behavior people cannot understand the savagery this, this, this savagery that people evince, that how people that share DNA with us, they don't understand why people could want to fondle, why, why cops can do things. Why, when you look at tapes of Occupy Wall Street and you see somebody standing there, you see a guy about to retire wearing a white shirt, take out a club or spray somebody. When you let human beings in charge of a structure, you will see this this uh, this aphrodisiac of power literally evolved in any system. Go back to Caesar, the Milgram experiment, the Stanford prison experiment. Look at it. It's documented.
we've seen since uh, 9-11, the introduction of the Patriot Act and nonstop legislation since then, uh, one liberty eroding piece of legislation or one liberty destroying piece of apparatus uh, after another come to bear in society to the point where we're, we're just kind of becoming used to it. But we need to understand that with every day that passes, every other next piece of legislation that comes down the road, every piece of equipment that gets installed that we have to subject ourselves to, we are becoming uh, more and more a Stasi style police state. But to see it spread from so-called security in the airport to uh, the everyday life in the streets, of course this is going to happen. The devices are getting smaller and smaller every single day. And I wouldn't even say it's going to be a possibility. Like this is, it's going to happen and it will be used. Shouldn't really be that much of a surprise. Yep, until it, you know, creeps into your apartment and records all your conversations there. Thank God though, because uh, we didn't have enough of a police state. Uh, best to try to figure out crimes before they happen and punish people for it. What can we do about this? First, you've got to get mad. We also have to focus on the vast network of industries that are making so much money off these drones and all the rest of the police, you know, the tanks that the local cops have and so forth. All of your money being used to enslave you while private companies that produce all this equipment, the naked body scanners, make the money. They take your tax money, private groups profit, while they turn you into a total prisoner. <laughs> Absolutely, we should be concerned. And of course, we're going to hear that argument uh, from the mainstream and from the businesses that stand to uh, reap an amazing windfall from the sale of these kind of devices is that, you know, it's better for the safety of the people of this country, it's better for the safety of the people of the world, and really, if you don't have anything to hide, then you won't be, uh, you won't mind subjecting yourself uh, to this humiliation uh, uh, on steroids. We have to educate ourselves, we have to understand what our freedoms are, who our enemies are, and it's not some guy in Yemen. The enemy is in Washington, D.C., and in every other uh, capital, state capital, local government office building. That's where the enemy is. Those are the people who want to take our, away our freedom, are taking away our freedoms. I also think part of defending our country is about defending our way of life, our constitution, and our freedom. And if we decide to uh, start giving those things away, I think we're already on a path to losing the battle. We've warned them, they still can't believe it because they've already bought into the lie, and that's what's so dangerous. They can't believe it's happening because deep down they're scared. They feel powerless when they really have power, so they, they play a mind trick of, well, this isn't really happening. Folks, there's no room for denial. Even your own instincts out there, everybody's freaked out. Your own good old boy gut. Your own sixth sense is telling you mayday, mayday, mayday. One day, somebody's going to have to make a stand. One day, somebody's going to have to say enough. We have accepted the notion that we should be treated like cattle. Make us safe, make us secure, put us in the barbed wire. It's time for the American people to stand up, shrug off the shackles of our government. So I think we should all rise up and we should stop this administration from what they're doing because they're destroying this country. I want my country back. I want it back right now. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all of it. Get mad and get focused and say, you're a bunch of terrorists that have hijacked this country. Well, I want freedom. We're going to take this country back. We are no longer that generation that doesn't care. We are no longer that generation that's prepared to sit back and take whatever they give us. We are now the generation that will stand with everyone who's fighting back. We hope you'll show solidarity with us and send a strong message to this government that uh, they can't throw their cuts at us. We're going to stand up and we're going to fight back.